Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, today's session is about Moat, uh, which is a Chrome extension that allows for voice notes, feedback, and so forth. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit around that extension and um, possible ways to use it. So before we start, has anyone used Moat at this point? And if you have, you can give me a little raise of the hand in the meet. If you haven't, then I will expect no one to. Okay, awesome. I presume you haven't, and that's why you're here. Um, I was informed about this in, um, in actually a Google training, even though it's not a Google extension necessarily. Um, it is something that is widely used, um, especially since the pandemic. And I just thought it was um, the perfect tool to uh, incorporate and probably use on, you know, for many of us in our daily work. So um, there's not a whole lot to it, which is makes it even easier. Uh, but I want to give you some examples of how that works. So Moat is, uh, oh, this is me. So for those of you who, who don't know me, I just assume like I'm Madonna, that everyone does. Um, but I'm Allison Bunnell and I am the technology trainer for the university. And um, all these videos are typically done by myself. And please, if I don't answer your questions or you have something else that you need, um, I know some of you may be new, feel free to contact me at this information. And it's at the end of this um, slideshow as well. Right, so Moat is, um, as I suggested, a extension that allows you to give some voice feedback. Uh, do you know that that means the voice feedback is um, similar to like texting, um, you know, voice texting on your phone, but you're doing it within Google products. So um, Google Classroom, for instance, uh, Google Docs, Slides, you can even do it in your Gmail. Um, and so, of course, this came up even more so during the height of the pandemic because many people were feeling taxed with their time and how can they, you know, provide feedback or information or many of us are in split in many different um, locations. So being able to give voice feedback or voice notes um, provides a lot of things, right? Number one, it allows us to multitask. Um, if you're like me, it, sometimes you're quicker to just get your voice out there. It's a quicker version. Um, importantly, it still gives that personalized feel and message. Um, you know, I, I've been in, <laughs> I was in a position once where I would email and I came from the legal world. So I would email in a very serious tone and I had an employer that was like, you need to be more cheery. And I was like, I'm being professional. So, you know, how many exclamation points can you put in an email or somewhere else? So this idea would allow you to provide voice feedback and still give that um, emphasis and tone uh, where you might lose that in an email or in a typical written digitally or otherwise um, note. So uh, so that's what this provides for. Specifically, um, if anyone's using Google Classroom, there's even more um, ability to add comments and again, allow for that personalization and for students to respond back to you using Moat um, as well. You can download it by doing a simple search of Moat. Um, if you'd like. It's also in this slideshow, which I'm happy to uh, provide you a link to in a second here. Um, there are, of course, multiple layers of you can pay for. There's enterprise versions and so forth. We as an institution do not um, subscribe to that. And there is a free version that I use and that I would recommend you using. Um, the biggest limitation with the free version is the amount of time you can uh, record. So you have 30 seconds, uh, which believe it or not is, is quite a bit, but you're unlimited with the amount of moats. So if you wanted to make it 60 seconds, you would just add another moat there um, in that type of idea. So that's one of the biggest differences um, from a teaching perspective. There are some other integrations like a STEM um, piece which allows you to do uh, mathematical notations and that's part of the paid or premium version um, as well as transcribing in different languages um, the note or moat I should say so there are a few differences there but for the overall simplistic um, moat that you can use in all these different areas or Google products it's available so feel free to play around with it um, 
and go from there. So as I mentioned, Moat is integrated with Google Docs, Slides, Forms, Classroom, and Gmail. You can also use it in Chrome, which I, I find interesting. So I'm gonna kind of jump off of this and show you what exactly I, I mean by all of that. So first, let me show you in Gmail. Um, once you have Moat offered or provided, I should say, um, you will see that at the bottom of my email, hopefully you can all see this, um, I've got a few different extensions on the left of here to the right of my send button. Can you all see that okay? Um, there's this little purple one and it, this is a moat. And that's the moat's icon is that like purple background with a white M. Um, and if I click this, I can record a moat. So if I wanted to send this to someone, an email, I could go ahead and do that. So I'll show you what that looks like in Gmail, and then I'll show you some other places. So once you actually download the extension, once it's here, it'll always be in your email um, as an available tool if you wanna use it. Um, so if I press this, it's actually recording me right now, but you could say something like, you know, this is great. Thank you for looking at it. I'll get back in touch with you soon. Once I'm done, I press this again, and you'll see it's starting to load. And there's my moat. And then I can literally just send this off. I don't even have to write anything if I didn't want to. Um, I'm not sure how, if you'll hear it as I play it back, but let's try it. I press this. It's actually recording me right now, but you could say something like, you know, this is free. Thank you for looking at it. I'll get back in touch with you soon. Once I'm done. So, so that's right. Can't get much simpler than that. Uh, so you could imagine in, feedback or any kind of information, or if you're on the road or you're in between meetings and you, you know, you don't want to type a large um, note or email, you could put it in a, a voice note or moat um, like this. And then you've got these three dots on my moat here. So I can edit, I can delete. If I decide I don't want to use it anymore. I can do that. Um, but let me show you at the top right, if you don't already know, at the very top right, when you're in a browser bar, um, what I mean is like a Chrome browser of some sort, I'll show you a, a blank one here. At the, at the top right, near my star here, I've got some other extensions. If you don't have any there, um, then you can either go into your three dots at the, the right, which you can't see because it's, I don't think because it's cutting off, but the three dots, let's see if it will let me show you. Bear with me. I don't know, it doesn't want to show me. But anyways, the three dots, there'll be something that says more tools. And if you go to more tools, you'll see um, extensions, okay? And that's where you want to go in. Oftentimes you'll have a puzzle piece icon like this. And if you see at the, the top right, I'm kind of hovering it. We'll be able to find your extensions, again, in the three dots or in your puzzle piece. And that will always tell you whether it's there and if you want to open it and so forth um, as well. So feel free to do that. And I am going to show you kind of what that looks like. So this is when I go to my um, moat extension. This is my activity. So you've got a few different um, options. Again, this is the free version. And this just tells me all of the moats that I've created in some fashion. Um, so somewhere in Google Docs, somewhere in um, Gmail, um, somewhere in Google Slides, and I can even replay them. Okay, uh, so you, you have an idea. Then you see to the right here where it says modus and unmodus. Um, the modest is um, those that have been viewed or heard by your audience. So, um, you know, I can't necessarily like see, you know, a whole lot, but they tell me that in fact, somebody's listened to it. So this is one that I actually created on an assignment that I made. Um, so I could actually go back and see the landing page and where I put that. And when I do that, and I'm happy to show you that, Hopefully it doesn't, I got to share, share this tab now. Um, it'll actually, actually take me here and says, here's, you know, Allison left you this voice note, um, you know, by moat, and then you can hear it, uh, you can reply and so forth. So um, what happens is they leave, they provide a randomized URL so that the likelihood of something, someone being able to get that um, information is much harder. Um, so that's why you, you may have noticed where it said um, unlisted, the availability, they keep it that way for a reason, okay? Uh, but again, whoever is receiving your moat, as well as yourself, 
can obviously you know hear it um, and watch it. You have the ability from from your um, again your activity page here to you know share it. You can also go over here and download it, okay, um, and so forth. And then if I go to my account, I've got some more um, abilities there. Your options. There's not a whole lot to it other than that. But you know, again, this is if I'm just in Gmail. Okay, as I was showing you a second ago, if I'm in Gmail and I'm making a moat, um, it's as simple as recording it um, from this little icon, which you will have once you um, install the extension. Um, and then you can do it from other places too. So, um, you know, here's my slideshow, which I was just showing to you. You can see at the top right, I've got that moat icon again. Okay, so I can do the same thing. Uh, so for collaboration, again, feedback, if you're getting this slideshow shared to you um, and you you know are given access you're certainly welcome to provide some sort of voice feedback uh, again for the same reasons we mentioned earlier for that inflection the ability to give a personalized note for your tone um, or just for ease or, or you know convenience um, as well sometimes it makes it easier um, so if i press this you'll see i just click this and i'll do the same thing and it will pop up so I can go ahead and record my moat with some sort of information. And then when I'm done, I press it again, it thinks, and now here it is, and I can insert it if I want to. Okay, so um, it's kind of working out. And there's my, there's my little audio. So what's neat about this feature is if you are one to use Google Slides often, you might know that you can't, um, like you can't speak over or voice record, I should say, over a slide unless you do that separately, meaning you'd have to record your voice in some sort of file and then attach it to each single slide in um, Google Slides, which is not really great and I don't recommend it. Um, but here's an option where again, it's feedback, but if you've got a 30 second um, interval of information, you just wanted to add to that slide, you could do that here. Um, again, it's a little bit of a workaround, but it's an option depending on, um, even if it's just an instruction, you know, please start on this slide and, and start viewing. When you get to slide three, do X, Y, and Z. You could put that in there as well for instruction um, purposes, not just end feedback. Um, so something else to consider when using it. And then you've got the same input like you would in, um, you know, uh, Microsoft, uh, PowerPoint and things along those lines. So there's your audio there. And that's as simple as that in, in adding it. So the nice thing is where whatever application you're using, again, in the Google um, products, you are literally pressing on that um, button and recording. Uh, and then if you're interested, you can go to your extensions and kind of check out what that looks like. So let me see if I, if I put it up, pull it up this way, but let me show you, let's see. Okay, so I'm in my kind of extensions here, finally. So if you go to those three dots and go to extensions, you can see all the extensions that I have um, in here's, here's mode. Um, so if you wanted to you know, check out any of the details, make sure you've provided permissions for it, you can do that as well as any other, um, you know, if you want to turn it off or remove it, uh, but those are all there as well. The other places, again, you can do it in Google Classroom. I'm not sure how many of you are using it or consider using it. That's a, you know certainly another conversation. I'm happy to talk to you about using Google Classroom. Um, I also have other recordings regarding that, but Google Classroom can be used for something outside of just, um, you know, for some of you, I know you're, you're working with students in other uh, facets. So you can use a Google Classroom to just interact and meet with students to even if it's just a repository of information um, or colleagues so you know certainly consider that and then you've got mode integrated there where you're sharing voice feedback um, as well as you know any other written feedback as well uh, so something to consider about consider there as well and let's go back to my powerpoint here and see where i left off so um, so you've got my little audio there now, <laughs> whether I like it or not. Um, and then I also wanted to let you know that for students or for, um, you know, colleagues or someone else who might be listening to your moat, they don't have to have the extension. Okay. 
Um, so do know that they would get just kind of a randomized URL that says, you know, Allison left, left you this moat and then you saw the web page it brings you to, and then you would listen to it there. Um, if they do have the extension um, in installed, then it would bring them just to the moat little box and then they would press. So either way is fine. It doesn't, um, it doesn't matter whether they have the extension or not. They can still access the voice notes, feedback or information. Um, and, you know, so certainly don't feel like that's going to, you know, it's not something else they have to sign into or that they even have to um, sign up for. It's a nice um, option again, just to, to access. And then this middle um, picture here again is, is what the, your extension will look like if you go to your extensions and you select at the top right there of your browser browser bar you'll see you've got your activities and engagement and that's the page i was showing you where it will show me every single mode and where i left it and so forth so you know do know that it's all right there um, as well oh likes to go ahead on me so other things you can do with Mo, you can incorporate emojis. Uh, you know, depends on who you're dealing with. Might be a good, good option. Again, something other than um, just your voice or you know, just writing. We all like to throw in another image or emoji. So you would use the, um, you would use the colon, and then you'd start writing in two letters like he, and then it would give you some options of what that would look like. Um, so can do that for you in a second here. Um, you'll also consider ways that you can incorporate moat um, in your daily work, whether it's with students or colleagues. It could be, you know, asking them to add a moat um, instead of, you know, writing something. I know we're dealing with all different uh, learning abilities. It's a great option, again, to use something, you know, some people are not um, comfortable with typing or, or, you know, want to do that. So using a moat might uh, encourage them to, you know, speak or do something a little bit differently um, as well. And, um, you know, so consider, you know, using moat for another way of expression um, as well. And then, you know, as I mentioned in Gmail, it's for lots of reasons, a great option, but also for those who might be worried about punctuation or any of the, the written, information it's another option there um, so i'm going to go here to uh, i'm going to get out of this for a second so i can show you what i mean here um, so when i am in this uh, this is just a just a, a sample document that i have and you can see as a um if i was sharing with this with people anybody that shares uh, or has this google doc can highlight some sort of information and you'll get these two options, as you know, regardless of moat or not. Um, you can add a comment or you can move into suggestion mode, which means um, that you're just suggesting in the Google Doc versus directly editing it. Um, but in any event, when you add a comment, you'll see now you've got that moat right there, that little, yep, so you would press that and do the same thing and record, and then you could add your comment. Um, the other thing I can do here is, um, I do my colon, I put in he, and now I've got heart. So maybe I want to just put in a heart, you know, or, or what have you. Um, so I've got that as well, but I cancel that. So in any time you want to do a moat, it's just like, think of it as commenting in Google Docs, but in this case, you're doing it with your voice. Uh, so you can do that as well. And then you see here, I actually had it translate, <laughs> translating in another language. Um, so that's why it says it there, but you could even have someone reply to you using a moat so they don't have to type or they could, um, and so forth. So it's not an all or nothing. It's something you can use sporadically, um, or consistently, whatever works for you, but it is another option. And all of this just kind of happens once you have the extension, um, downloaded and that looks, um, I'll show you a little bit. And it is in the Chrome store, but you can just do a Google search or again, um, use that. There are some more, there's lots of um, additional resources, but I think we've covered just about all of it. Um, it's not a super complicated extension um, at this point, but here, you know, you can see I have mine added, but if I needed to remove it, it would be there. Um, I always like to look at the reviews and get some other information. Um, 
but you can see here, anything that has an asterisk on this description is referring to the paid version, um, you know, but maybe it's something that your department, you know, could use or, or what have you. So feel free to check that out as well, um, but that's easy enough to download um, once you do. And let's see, anything else I want to, um, so that's kind of what it would look like. Um, and then listening to the moat, like I mentioned, is um, it, you'll either get a URL or you'll get something like this where you just get um, a pop-up that allows you to, you know, listen to the moat as well. There are lots and lots of ideas. Um, you can also search for different resources if you're looking specifically, but I would say generally speaking, if you're looking to add, um, again, more um, personalized feedback or, or just for whatever reason, whether it's for the audience you're dealing with, um, would you better with hearing your voice, you know, whether you're more comfortable. I mean, the list goes on and on, but certainly from a feedback perspective, um, you know, being able to hear from your instructor or hear who you're, you know, working with, that always leaves, leaves some comfort for them. Um, in addition to that, engagement. If you're looking to engage that feedback, like, okay, did they see it? You'll be able to see which one was modest. You know, you'll be able to see if people are responding, especially if you're in Google Classroom, a lot of those comments come back and forth. Um, so hopefully that gives you a very quick, but um, an option to consider with Moat.